Welcome to Interclimate, a leading environmental consultancy. My name is Diksha Khetani and I am back with interesting video. Today we are going to discuss about EPR authorization for e-waste management. So watch the complete video to know more about the topic in detail. Let's start. Extended producer responsibility also known as EPR authorization is the permission given by Central Pollution Control Board CPCP to the producer, importers and brand owners also known as PIPO of electrical and electronic equipment. The ERP authorization is mandatory and given for environmentally sound management of e-waste produced. A legislative strategy, ERP is implemented by industrialized countries to promote and encourage reuse, recycling and eco-friendly disposable of electronic waste. Extended producer responsibility ensures that the responsibility of disposing of e-waste lies on the manufacturer of the goods. EPR must be fulfilled by implementing EPR plans and targets outlined in the authorization certificate, including the details of the PRO and e-waste exchange process. EPR authorization is required for buyback, recycling and reuses through collection from dealers, collection centers, producer responsibility organization also known as PRO etc. This is achieved through a buyback arrangement, exchange system, deposit refund system or providing other means to incentivize the end user so that collection and recycling or disposal can be done by authorized units, collectors, dismantlers, refurbishers in the formal sector as per the guidelines issued by CPCB. Since the start of the video, we are talking about EPR. But what is actual the need for extended producer responsibility? To answer the question, let's understand the topic in detail. EPR was in the making for a long time. EPR in India was first introduced in 2011 under the E-Waste Management and Handling Rules 2011. Indeed, it was an effort to shift the responsibility of waste management to the producer of that product that generated the waste, which included plastic waste as well as e-waste. Later, with the e-waste management rule 2016, the manufacturers, producers, along with dealers and refurbishers who intended to sell refurbished EEE were also identified as additional stakeholders and included under EPR. The need for extended producer responsibilities was felt to make an entity that introduces EEE in the consumer market responsible for the safe collection, dismantling and disposal or you can say recycling of the e-waste generated by their products. Extended producer responsibility aims to circle e-waste back into the system to get resources embedded in the discarded items. EPR was incepted in Sweden, which became the first country to implement it in 1988. Since then, EPR has been implemented in many countries across the globe. Now you must be wondering where PIPOs need EPR authorization. To answer this, simply understand that when a producer introduces a product along with its plastic packaging in the market, that triple E will result in the discarded e-waste. This e-waste can be in the form of plastic parts which are recyclable and non-recyclable waste, metal plants, wires, electronic chips, hazardous metals and chemicals found in their compounds. 
toxic chemicals used in the production of tripoli like pcts and pcbs and even some valuable metals keeping all this in mind epr was introduced and required to be practiced epr authorization is based on the polluter pays principle thus the entities that produce e waste will need epr authorization for sure apart from all these a refurbisher is one who needs the epr authorization as well obviously there are certain documents required to obtain an epr authorization for e waste management these are as follows epr plan mentioning the required details gst certificate copy of permission from the concerned department or ministry for selling their product sole proprietor or authorized signatory kyc copies of agreement with collection centers excel sheets including details of imported products copies of agreement with dealers memorandum of association copies of agreement with dismantlers and recyclers certification of incorporation also known as cin copies of agreement with treatment storage and disposal facilities also known as tsdfs company's pan card self declaration on rohs copy of tgft permission license that is IEC certificate copies of agreement with PRO if applicable now when it comes to register for EPR authorization for e waste management there are certain steps that needed to be followed step 1 document and submission phase this step involves that the applicant must file an EPR authorization form all required documents and a comprehensive epr plan for the collection dismantling and recycling of the products step 2 is document scrutiny by cpcb the chairman of the cpcb approves or rejects the application based on the epr plan in case of incomplete applications or any issue flag the applicant will be given a time frame to resolve such issues Next comes the step 3 which is the grant of EPR authorization CPCB issues EPR authorization within 120 days of receiving the accepted application in case of an amendment in the rules a revised NOC is issued now let us move on to the process of renewal of EPR authorization the EPR authorization received from a CPCB is valid for 5 years an application for renewal of epr authorization must be made within 16 days of expiry of the authorization the renewal fee for the epr authorization is same as the application fee for new application in case of renewal of epr authorization the member secretary is the app- approving authority refusal of epr authorization by cpcb cpcb can refuse an epr authorization to an applicant if he cannot provide the requisite details on quantity its epr plan and rohs self declaration or the agreement copy with authorized dismantlers or recyclers within 45 days after the cpcb raises such issue However, an opportunity to present its case is given to the applicant before the refusal of grant of EPR authorization. Now we can talk about the cancellation of EPR authorization. So if at any stage during the operation the CPCB or the concerned SPCB finds the authorized entity not complying with the provisions guidelines or amendments in the e-waste management rules 2016 their epr authorization can be cancelled by the cpcb now you will also agree that getting an epr authorization 
for an e-waste management is quite a daunting task but we at enterclimate can assist you with this easily enterclimate is a one stop epr authorization solution for all your needs enterclimate provides one stop support for all your legal requirements concerning your epr authorization for e-waste management our team comprises of experts from all the domain who answers all your queries accurately we also provide end to end guidance our team knows how important your business is to you we provide all the inclusive assistance from the start till the end of your epr authorization journey thereafter we also provide you timely assistance enterclimate experts are known for their quick response rate we ensure that our communication with our clients is always prompt upbeat and seamless so this was all about epr authorization for e waste management if you find the video interesting don't forget to like and share it also do subscribe our channel for watching more such informative videos thank you